the first thing that we're going to look at here is the time machine itself, uh, Doc Brown's famous DeLorean. Now, the time machine is designed so that when it hits 88 miles per hour, time travel occurs. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Well, we're going to look at how realistic that really is. Now, according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, time slows down as you approach the speed of light. Therefore, if you were to achieve the speed of light, you could essentially instantly travel into the future. However, the speed of light is pretty fast. It's about 300 million meters per second. So what we're going to assume here is that when the DeLorean hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Uh, well, yes, but more importantly, the flux capacitor activates and instantly accelerates the car to the speed of light. But how fast would that actually accelerate? Well, we're going to assume that acceleration to the speed of light does not take place instantly, rather, let's say a millisecond or so. We can use our acceleration formula, Vf minus Vi over T, to estimate the acceleration. And as you can see, it turns out to be, well, about 30 billion meters per second squared. This already seems like, well, a completely impossible situation. But let's take it a step further. How much force would this exert on Einstein, the dog riding in the car? Well, the standard DeLorean weight is about uh, 1,200 kilograms, but this is not a standard DeLorean. <laughs> It has a ton of add-ons and machinery and all sorts of stuff that will add a ton of weight onto it. So we're going to estimate the weight of this DeLorean to be about 2,000 kilograms. Now our force equation, force is mass times acceleration, we simply multiply the mass of this car times its acceleration that we already figured out, and we come up with an answer of about 60 trillion newtons. And well, that's equal to about 13 trillion pounds of force. Um, Frankly, that would kill you. So, we're going to call this one not realistic. I need to bore you. Hoverboard? Where is he? Here. Next, we have the hoverboard, which Marty McFly rides around in part two. The hoverboard, it's about the same size as a standard skateboard these days. Um, of course, the only difference is that it flies above the ground instead of rolling on wheels. We're going to do a bit more estimation here. Looking at the still here, we can estimate that Marty's probably about 1.7 meters high, average height, uh, and about 68 kilograms. In addition, standard skateboards today weigh about 2 kilograms, so we're going to add those together and get a total of about 70 kilograms that have to be lifted off of the ground by this hoverboard. Now we know that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, so we can use our force equation, force equals mass times acceleration, to figure out that the hoverboard has to be doing about 686 newtons of force to keep both Marty and itself in the air. Now this is a reasonable amount of force, it's no big deal for most skateboards to keep up a person weighing about 68 kilograms. However, as we mentioned earlier, this is not a normal skateboard. Mm. And where we stand right now, technology-wise, we simply don't have the capability to keep a 68-70 kilogram person hovering about, say, 10 centimeters in the air for any extended period of time. So since we don't know if this kind of technology is going to be available anytime in the future, we can't really draw a conclusion from this one. But it's something worth thinking about.
got ourselves a new courthouse! High time we had a hanging! Hey! Yeah. Finally, we're going to look at the scene here, in which Marty has a rope tied around his neck and he is strung up in the air. We're going to use our previous estimations of him being about 1.7 meters tall and weighing about 68 kilograms for this. Now, the force required to break a human neck is approximately 4,500 newtons or so. Once again, using our trusty force equation, we can multiply Marty's mass by the acceleration due to gravity, and we come up with about 666 newtons, which is definitely not enough to break his neck. This coupled with the fact that it appears he is holding the rope with his hands, mean that there's no chance he would die in this case.